Hello and welcome back. So today we're going to be um, looking at um, documentation. Um, so this is really just going to be in the plan view at this stage. Um, we'll get into um, into our into our layouts and um, and drawings um, at a later date. Um, but today we're going to look at the dimensioning tools. Um, a little bit in the text tools, um, 2D fills and lines and circles and that sort of carrying we've already kind of covered. Um, and we will also look at the sectioning tools um, down the bottom here. Um, and we may even look at the interior elevation tool just briefly. So I wanted to do this one relatively quickly. Um, so let's start off with the, um, the dimensioning tool. Now first of all, actually what I might do is I'm just going to draw just a little something just down the corner here. Um, oops, make sure we get at the right angles. Okay, um, and I'm going to draw a couple of um, sort of lines and we're going to play around with it a little bit. So um, let's go and do a little curve here, right? Cool, and then we'll go and drop back to this. Excellent, and then we'll come back up at an angle. How's that? All right, so first of all, um, the way that this dimensioning tool works um, is that we just want to snap onto things, okay? When you snap onto something, you should get a circle like that. Um, if you just snap onto, well, if you don't snap onto something, you just click somewhere random, you'll get a square. So if you're expecting to dimension something and you end up with a square, um, just keep that in mind. All right, so we can double click um, and that brings up this little hammer and that's how far away it's going to draw the dimension. Note, um, our CAD software is very accurate and so if you just draw things and eyeball it and don't use your snap grid or anything like that, um, or you know, type in five meters, you are gonna get crazy dimensions. And yes, you can fudge these um, because I can actually go into here um, somewhere I can change it to a static dimension. In fact, if I open up this, I can even see in here it's got a measured value. Um, we can actually go into this custom text. Um, you can do auto text. Um, so at the moment you see it says measured value. You can do some pretty amazing sort of scripting in here, but all I'm going to do is let's say it was meant to be five meters. So I could fudge it and go five meters. Okay, and go okay, and it will say five M. Cool. Um, it's a lie. So try to draw accurately in the beginning. Um, I'm just going to delete that for a second. We can put in multiple points, so if I go point, point, and see down here there should be a little snap there. So yeah, there, that black, cool, and then we go, cool, I can pull that out to there, and we get the three dimensions. These are all very dynamic, so if I go and move this point, watch, okay, the dimensions move as well. Okay, so that they they actually snap to things, and whenever we adjust things, they will adjust too. Um, be careful if you've got stuff on an angle. You know, make sure you're dimensioning stuff correctly. So if I wanted to dimension this, I would want to do that dimension on an angle. Okay, cool. So that will do it vertically, um, horizontally, or parallel to our line. Now, don't go crazy because I've seen people do this before. They're going to Cool, I'm going to snap to there, there, and there. Yeah. In fact, it won't even let me. You know, um, so it's not going to let me do the, the one that's on an angle um, because it doesn't make any sense because this one here would be incorrectly dimensioned. We can do multiple dimensions, of course. Okay. We can also actually... Um, oh, you can hit OK as well if you... Not wanting to double click. We can also do um, over a curve. So if we just go click, okay. So that's the um, the circumference. I suppose it's not a complete circle, but um, so it's actually that's how how that dimension all the way around it. Cool. So very powerful tools um, and all very dynamic. So if we go and you know change the size of this. Okay, it will change the dimensions as well. Note, see even this one move because we're snapping to those points. All right, let's just delete all that. And we're gonna come over to here. Um, so the same thing here, so we can go through and we can dimension our windows. Okay. I'll actually do it from this side. Hang on, what's going on there? All right. Oh, that's because I've got the curved one on still. I want this one. Cool. 
and away we go. I'll show you another way of doing interior dimensions um, very shortly. All right, our next um, dimensioning tool here um, is for level dimensions. Um, and so the way that the leveling dimensioning tool works, um, normally this would be set to here, it's all right. <laughs> um, is wherever you click it gives a height of what's underneath your mouse. Now this may or may not be what you actually want because for example at the moment um, you'll see that it's actually doing the slab. Um, now I can actually if I hit tab it should go through and give me the mesh. It's not giving me the roof though. Now if I wanted the roof I could actually go up to the roof layer and now you can see mesh, slab, mesh, slab, and it's just not going to give me the roof, which is a bit odd. This element is inactive in this view. What is going on there? Okay, let's set this to roof, and we should get um, a height. There we go. Okay, so that's the height of the roof. No, it's not because why is it ah actually this is an interesting one when it doesn't like latch onto something quite often what is happening is that it's um it will latch on to the three meters it's actually the height of the story um and you'll see this all the time um i'm really not sure what is going on here because um this tool should let's just have a look at the settings should work on this roof it's working there but it's not working there why is that? I'm on the roof story. It would appear that my roof isn't going all the way up. Very strange. That's really unusual. Um, but anyway. Um, let's just go. I'm just going to undo a whole bunch of these. Let's go back down to the ground floor. Let's go. Remember this trick. So if I go and select level dimensioning tool and I go Command A, it will select all or Control A on the PC, and I can go delete. And let's just get back into this. So um, kind of a puzzle that one, but anyway. And uh, let's go back to our level dimensioning tool, and we're set to roof. Okay, I wasn't wasn't expecting it to work to be honest. Um, and we go and set it to here. You can see that's 5.4, and you can actually see how it goes. See how it goes, sort of a dark blue here. Um, in fact, we we'll probably get it when it snaps to there. See, that's working. For some reason, it's not working in the middle of the roof, which this tool should force that. Okay, so you can actually see that's that's my my maximum height of my roof. I can actually put it on there, and it should work on this as well. Yeah, see, it seems to be working there, but it's not working in the centre. Um, which is what the gravity tool is designed to do is actually you know it's meant to be snapping to that um, we will see down here though so for example if I go down to um, our ground floor again and we pop down to this level so here we can see if I go and change this um, hang on, let's just grab um, I don't do any of these dimensions I'll select them delete. whoopsies make sure you don't have multiple things selected Zane. So we're going to go to our gravity tool. If I want the height of the mesh, okay, under this point here. Okay, so let's say we go and put it there. That's 1.86. Sorry, 0.186. Um, yeah, it should be about the same on that side, right? If I change this though to the um, roof, and I go and put this in this corner, we get a different measurement. Okay, so we can actually dimension um, things in the same spot, if you like. Um, by controlling it with the gravity tool. Alright, um, again these will actually snap to elements, so if I go and let's say that we want this um, on the slab, right, if I go and click that and then I go move this, it should move with it, cool. Um, if we have multiple elements on top of each other, so let's say we've got another slab over the top of this slab, so it could be like a roof and a, oh, sorry, a ceiling and a, and a floor slab all on the same story, um, you might want to do the height of the um, slab that's underneath it, right? And they'd be overlapping. So when you go and do this gravity tool, if you hit tab, you'll go through all of the slabs underneath your cursor. Okay, so that means I can actually do the height of the slab that's underneath here, not the slab that's on top. Okay. Uh, Alright, let's just keep moving. 
Um, oh, we can do static ones again as well. It's um, very much the same sort of control. So when you go and drop that height on, if you select it and bring up the settings, um, you should be able to do a static level. And then when we go in here, we should be able to edit that as if. No, it's not going to do it. There we go. Let's go like that. There we go. Five meters. Yeah. Cool. And it will be five meters. So we can fudge these as well. All right. Um, here's the text tool. So we actually kind of just saw the text tool, in fact. Um, now, the text tool, you might think, oh, boring. Yeah, yes, you can do text. Um, but we can also do what's called um, auto text. Now, this is really cool. So this um, means that we can pull out all sorts of stuff, um, including, for example, scale, um, contact details, the client details, all this sort of carry on. So what we can do is we can go client full name. Okay, and it appears like that, which in this case will probably be empty. Um, but if we go, this is a little known trick, if you go into info, project info, you'll actually see there's all sorts of stuff in here, including the client full name. Cool, and I go Mr. Bob John Smith. Um, cool, um, and yeah, we can do all sorts of stuff. Name order, given name first. Okay, okay. Um, and if we were going to go to print, um, actually, we'll just fake this because it should already have a ground floor plan, and we'll actually zoom in there. And it's not actually displaying it. It's meant to have said client's full name. Um, it'll probably work when we go to print. Do we see what happens? Um, I'm just going to go open and preview. No, it's saying client full name. That's a bit weird. We have got it in there, haven't we? Info, project info, client full name. Oh, sorry, I did contact full name uh, instead of client full name. That's here. There we go. Yeah, Bob. Okay. Okay. There we go. And this is Bob. Helps if I fill in the right information. Okay. Um, and so whenever I want to change that, all I do is I just go into the um, into the info. And so if Bob's no longer our client because um, he left us and we're going to sell this house to somebody else, we would just go in here and change Bob to John. Cool. And it will change to John. If we go to edit this text, okay, you'll actually see that it goes sort of this dark gray. Um, and that means it's auto text. Um, and so, yep, you can just go, uh, it was here. <laughs> okay, so you can mix your auto text you know, on, you know, and instead of putting in today's date, you can go in here, you can not search this, so you can say date. Um, so we go, here's the system date short, cool. Double click on that, and it will say the 5th, 6th, 20, tomorrow it will say. 6th, um, 6th, six, six, actually, is that, it's not the date today, is it? Oh, it is. All right, it's a fifth. It's a fifth already. Okay, so auto text really cool. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff like you know scale and all that sort of carry on as well. All right, moving right along. Um, oh, this is uh, sort of like you know um, text where we can kind of like you know link to some object, and again it will snap. So if we go move this, it will move with it. Um, I do find sometimes it does stay where it is. So for example, yeah, see, it didn't actually snap to it which is a bit weird because I can go and move this, you know, and it does, but when you go and adjust some points, it doesn't stay. It's still attached to the object. Um, yeah, I suppose that would be kind of cool. I don't know. But anyway, um, then we've got things like our fill tools. So I'm not really going to go into this. They're just 2D tools, okay? So, we, yeah, we can draw our fills. Um, this will be um, a little bit more interesting when we talk about sections and details. Um, so uh, this drawing tool, actually, if you go and place a drawing, so if you get external content, place external drawing. Um, so that could be um, a, a you know an aerial photograph or a DXF or all sorts of stuff. Um, you can actually see there's all the different types that you can bring in. So you can bring in an external drawing, um, even another Archicad drawing actually. 
um, it's actually going to place it and you'll see this icon in the top corner and again you've got a whole bunch of settings in there of what you can do and you know whether or not it has a frame and all sorts of crazy stuff um, we've also got the sectioning tools so the sectioning tools um, are very handy um, three ways of drawing it really oh actually first of all this I don't know why but for some reason you can draw sections that cut around things um, I suppose if you had like a building facade and you wanted to do a detail of you know the south side but there was like I don't know an alleyway or something you could kind of draw from there backwards and then from there backwards I don't know um, normally we just use it like this so it's just two points um, and then we've got the, uh, three options here so this first option draws back infinitely um, the second option um, draws back to a limited distance and this is just a thin section okay so for example if I wanted to do a little detail through this wheelchair ramp I might just want to do it as a thin section okay so if I draw this I'm not okay remember to use a little bit of I'm not going to see um, any features on this back wall or actually even that door frame okay so it's just going to cut straight through it and I'll just see it as a whole you'll see down here we've got sections and here's section 01 if I open up section 01 you can see there so we're not seeing the other side of the door frame oh, we are seeing a little mistake though this should be coming down so I can actually edit items in here as well so if I bring that down then I need to bring that up. or maybe we can can we change the angle of this we can I can change the angle of my ramp cool so it matches that okay so we can actually edit things um, and that's gonna you know, obviously change everywhere um, including in the 3d um, you'll notice that we have got some oddities here so for example um, this fill doesn't actually fill all the way in this is the really cool thing so if I suspend my groups you watch this I can actually adjust this fill um, oops, let's grab that and if I grab that point I should be oh no it's not it's still a wall ah okay so what I need to do I can actually change this so that um, this drawing is no longer linked now this there is dangers involved in this of course if I go and make changes um, these aren't going to update um, so oops hang on if we go into here so you'll notice for example okay at the moment just you can see when I click on things that's a door that's a wall that's a you know a roof um, it's a slab etc etc okay if I go into here and I go to the section settings I can actually change this here it says status auto rebuild I can change this into a drawing and now this is a fill yeah this is a line okay this is another fill it's no longer a roof or a slab or anything like that which means if I wanted to fix this little oddity I've got happening here I can because now it's just a fill okay and so I can touch this up but yeah warning if I go and change anything so um, in the 2d view it will not update okay if I go and move this over to here okay completely ruined it my section still looks the same um, if I change this back um, so if I go section settings and we change this back to a um, an auto rebuild then it will update but I'll lose my changes okay that gap is now open and my um, my ramp has disappeared all right move that back all right so that's a thin section um, this one here will draw back to a certain distance so um, let's say actually we'll leave that one there why not let's say we'll, we'll go and put a window and we'll put one of these windows over here okay um, so it won't show up in this section um, if I was to use this tool okay I can go and cut through this and draw back to a certain distance so this will show the door frame now but not the window okay so now I can actually see that entire door frame but I'm not seeing the window behind it and if I was to draw this one here in fact let's go and we'll just go and drop like a chair way over here in the background should really use a, a, a tree shouldn't we let's have a look what have we got in here furnishings I think it's under visualization isn't it visualization site improvements garden cool and I'm gonna choose a that one there looks cool okay and we'll drop that over here okay and if we go and use this sectioning tool where it's drawing infinitely 
Okay, draw. Yet another one. Through here, in that direction. It'll draw everything in that direction. Okay, including the tree and the window and the whole lot. Okay. Awesome. Um, okay, I haven't got much time. Um, the elevation tool is practically the same as what you just saw. Um, just uses a little bit um, of different sort of settings when we go and draw it, and that's exactly what you see um, on these um, elevations that have been created for you. So if we look at the south elevation. You just notice that it actually um, is like you know coloured in, and you can have victorial shadows and things like that. You can actually do the same though um, with your sections. Um, you just have to go and change the settings. Um, down here, oh, this is the um, interior elevations. Is it elevations? Interior. Yeah, interior elevation tool. Um, so we can get this, I'm just going to magic wand this straight to the slab. And then I'm going to draw it like that. And when I go along this setting, you'll see that we've got interior elevations. And it's actually drawn a whole bunch of interior elevations. So if we look at the south one, which is probably the most interesting, you can see we've actually got all of the um, details for the interior of that room. Um, and so I can go through here now and dimension it up and do whatever I like. Um, Finally, we've got um, the detail tool and the change tool, which basically the same thing. Um, so the detail tool, I can draw a little box around it, and we can put a little detail 01 on there. And when I go and open up my detail, I've got like another drawing again. Um, so there we go. There's our detail. Open it up. Okay, so we open up this. Um, now you'll notice something interesting about the details and that um, when you open them these are actually drawings so like we just saw um, when we turned our section into a drawing this is automatically a drawing um, now this is kind of cool because yeah you can sort of you know play around with this and um, and treat it like it, as if it was a you know a proper um, you know detailed drawing you know so which you yeah, know we can just treat these like the just normal sort of shapes and modify things and kind of get all the details in there that you wouldn't normally get from um, doing it any other way okay so yeah we can go in there and we you reckon we can do this should be able to oh those meeting yep no cool we'll grab these two lines and we'll fill it them off as well cool yeah, um, see, because these are all different shapes, ideally what I need to do is just you know, delete that one, delete that one, I'll bring this one all the way back, you know, etc, etc. Um, so this is all cool, but of course the problem is, is what happens when um, you go and update this? Well, unfortunately you're going to lose all of your hard work, um, which kind of sucks, but no, well, that's just part of the game I suppose yeah, there we go. so even though having rounded corners on my building I could uh, let's face it I could actually draw this if I really really wanted to um, so what happens though when you do go and make some changes so if I go to the 2d here you'll notice okay totally different um, if I go and move this wall and I go and open up my detail again Let's put that to view. Um, it doesn't update. Okay, if I right click on here though, I can actually say rebuild from source view and it will rebuild it and I get back to where I was. Um, note that some of these changes have actually stayed there because this is actually um, a little curve. Okay, so um, it's not too bad. I mean, a lot of the stuff that you might add, so if you're adding stuff, um, yeah, like if I go and dimension it and things like that. Um, all that will kind of stay there, um, but any major changes that you make um, in that drawing, um, in that detailed drawing, don't don't come back in the other direction. Okay, so if I change the thickness of the wall, um, yeah, it's not going to change um, because it's just a fill and lines, etc. So that that is a little bit of a difference. Um, the last thing that's in this, I must admit, I don't think I've ever used. It's the change tool. Um, it appears to be exactly the same as a detail. Um, and this would normally you know, indicate a change that you are going to make and I assume that somewhere in here we will see um, a change list or something like that. 
I need to change 102, you know, and it's got some metadata attached to it. I'm assuming there's probably a view somewhere of it. I don't know. Um, no, it doesn't look like it. Um, but there'll be metadata attached to that. Um, so, you know, if this had to change, then when I go and pull up the details in here, we would have, I imagine, some sort of change that gets made, and then we get to add some extra text, and that sort of carry, carry on. As I said, though, I think it has the properties. So, yeah, it would be... Yeah, it's just a change marker. But, yeah, so, anyway, that's pretty much um, it. I know that was kind of a, a rushed job through it. Is there anything I want to expand on? Um, I don't think so. Um, let's face it, most people have left by now. <laughs> um, just looking at my YouTube stats on, you know, um, slowly people drop off through the through the session. Um, so for those that are still remaining, um, let's have a little look at this section here. Um, if we go to this section, actually we'll go to this one here, right? So this one's actually got all the interior. You'll actually notice that um, if we go to the section settings, you can change a whole lot of how this all gets displayed. Okay. Um, so you can use like you know, a uniform pen on your cuts. Sometimes it's quite nice to show things that have been cut in red pen. Um, yeah. So then you can see what's been cut and what hasn't. You know, or a uniform fill or something like that. You know, so there's a classic. Um, it's more relevant to 3D settings, I suppose. But yeah, there's the cut fill pen. Yeah, so maybe that's going to be red as well. Yeah, and so then anything that we cut through gets drawn as red. Um, and anything that was remaining, well, there's no other fills. <laughs> but if there were, yeah, we would see those. Um, you can also, actually, we'll, we'll keep working on this. Eh? So let's say we wanted to actually have this a little bit more sort of three-dimensional, if you like. So we could actually turn on um, Victorial 3D Hatching. It'd be really nice if, if, um, if Auto, uh, AutoCAD, if you're, or Graphisoft, if you're listening, um, a preview. Um, like, you know, like sort of you get in Adobe apps where you can like click live preview and then when you're making the changes you actually see it happening in real time. That would be cool. Because um, it always sucks when you're kind of making the changes and when you come back you'd change something you didn't want to and you're not sure what it was when you did it. Um, how come that didn't turn on the Victorial 3D hatching? That should have actually turned. Oh, there we go, Sun's Shadows. Yeah. No. Yep, there we go. Okay. Note though, there's a little bit of an odd thing happens. This is casting shadows, um, and it looks like there's a hole in the roof, which I'm pretty certain there isn't. It's kind of like it. Um, it actually takes into account this, the the cutting that it's, is happening here. So this doesn't always look that great. Um, if it was, um, yeah, maybe cutting through the path and looking at the face of this building, it looked fine. Um, but in this case, you can actually see it looks as if um, the the sun is actually you know, being cast on it in a kind of an odd way. You'll find that and when you go and change some of these settings. So if I go and make this actually a bit longer, you'll probably find actually that... Uh, oh, hang on, where are we? I'm going to grab this. I'll just stretch this out. No, 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 I did want to grab that end. Um, and you could crop it off, I suppose. I don't know. Um, when you go and, and draw it. Uh, where is our section 03? Okay, see how the see the shadows actually as if it's been cut off there, but I could go and place this. Um, but there's a lot of weird things happening with this, so generally you you don't want that on. But um, if it was like outside elements, it might look quite cool. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, I think we'll leave it at that, and um, we'll see you in the next session. Till then.